While conflicts between countries dominate the headlines, school-aged children are waging a war of their own. They're battling bullies at school, in the hallways, and on the Internet and social media. Some of these predators are known to their victims, and some, perhaps the most cowardly, remain anonymous. As Full Frame contributor Sandra Hughes found out, cyberbullying is a heartbreaking reality for many young people, a reality that is having fatal consequences. Anna and Danny Mendez could not have been more proud of their son Daniel. He was in his second year of high school in San Clemente, California, about an hour south of Los Angeles. Daniel was a football player. He was strong. He was handsome. He was on the honor roll. A straight A student, um, kind, loving. He was also the victim of bullying in person, and threats were also made on his cell phone. The bullying for Daniel really started in elementary school. It was physical, it was verbal, it was emotional. Um, they were calling him spick and loser and gay, um, and you know, pushing him, shoving him harassing him out on the playgrounds and the football field, um, and they just wouldn't let up. Although he loved football, he told his parents he wanted to quit the team. As a freshman, he went on the freshman football team, and um, we think that in, during that period that he was being significantly bullied. It got so bad that at 16 years old, Daniel Mendez decided it wasn't worth living with the bullying and he shot himself on the front lawn of a friend's house. Daniel never wanted to be thought of as a victim, and yet that's become his legacy, is that he was a victim of bullying. Daniel Mendez, victim of bullying. Happy birthday to you. After Daniel's suicide, his friends got together and organized an anti-bullying club at his high school, and that was the beginning of Cool to be Kind. Good evening. You're listening to Collage, a weekly public affairs show on FM 88.5 KSBR. I'm Don Camber. Our guest... Cool to be Kind's president is now Victoria Mendez, Daniel's little sister, who was 12 when he took his life. She and another member of the club came with San Clemente High School's principal, Michael Halt, to Saddleback College's radio station to spread awareness about their club and why Daniel died. He was too kind, and he did not want to fight back. Cool to be Kind now has 15 chapters across the country and 100 members at San Clemente High School alone. At San Clemente High School, I truly do believe that Cool to be Kind um, has been present for five years, that that has made a major difference, and we see much less bullying on campus. Even the statistics support this fact, as they do show that um, schools with an anti-bullying club that is student-led um, just that presence alone reduces bullying by 50%. Still, last year, San Clemente High went on lockdown because of threats made by bullies on a social media site. Today, because of cyberbullying, um, a victim can feel that they're under assault 24-7. A professor of gender studies, Carol Ketchum, says her research shows an increase in cyberbullying. And no wonder. My students and students in um, K-12 now, um, particularly in high school, right, there is, in their mind, there's no distinction between the online world and the brick-and-mortar schoolyard world. One sad irony, Ketchum's own daughter was cyberbullied in high school. On the bright side, Ketchum says California has some of the best and toughest anti-bullying laws in the country. But when it comes to enforcing those laws, the state falls short. The California State Auditor took the Department of Education to task for this. In a report filed last year, it found victims are not receiving a prompt review of their appeals or the benefit of an independent review of their complaints. No one is investigating, no one is supporting these kids, nobody is watching them, no one is there at their, this last stop, you know, their last hope at the California Department of Education, and no one is there to support them. While many children feel alone and without support, and suicide is the third highest cause of death in the U.S. for teenagers, the Mendez family says Daniel didn't die in vain. 
After he died, we started the uh, National Association of People Against Bullying, uh, NAPAB.org. And we offer free therapy, free martial arts, and free private investigative services to bullied children. Finally, they feel like Daniel is able to fight back. For Full Frame, this is Sandra Hughes in San Clemente, California.